Good morning and welcome to our Easter worship service. Uh, it is great to be with all of you uh, through the internet and I hope your Easter day is off to a good start. Uh, as we begin, know that this is a Holy Communion worship service. So later in the service, we are gonna be celebrating the Lord's Supper. Uh, so you still have time um, to bring together some bread and wine and, and have that ready uh, for Holy Communion. Um, as we begin this morning, uh, we begin with some Easter greetings from some people. Uh, we're going to hear from our sister congregations and ministries of the Flathead Cluster in the Montana Synod. Uh, but first, a word from Ashton. Jesus arose. Happy Easter. Done. Hello, I'm Pastor Carol Seelheimer with Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Thompson Falls. Wishing you a blessed Easter season. Alleluia, Christ is risen. And from First Lutheran Church in Plains, rejoice for he is risen. Alleluia. And a happy Easter morning to you from Hot Springs, the Lutheran and Presbyterian United Churches, where Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Greetings from Pastor Seth Nelson Hewitt at Faith Lutheran in Ronan. We are so excited to be worshiping with all our brothers and sisters in the faith across Western Montana on this most holy of Resurrection Sundays. Christ is risen. 
Jesus and Alleluia. Easter greetings from Pastor Melanie Martin Dent at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Polson. Grace and peace to you from Eidsvold Lutheran Church, where we seek to be builders of faithful and responsible lives for a stronger community. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Greetings from Northridge Lutheran Church in Kalispell. Northridge was a mission startup of Bethlehem Lutheran Church in 1978. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The tomb is empty and Jesus is risen. A blessed Easter from Bethlehem. Alleluia. Good morning, this is Pastor Peter Erickson of our Savior's Lutheran Church in Columbia Falls, Montana, where Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hi, it's Pastor Steve Olson from Christ Lutheran Church here in Libby. Like all of you, we're not going to be able to celebrate Easter in our beautiful worship space, but that doesn't mean we're not going to celebrate Easter joyfully. We are. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Blessings to you this Easter from Loggerland. Christ is risen at Emmanuel Lutheran. Hallelujah! Greetings from Flathead Lutheran Bible Camp. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! And all God's Easter children said, Amen! All right, so repeat after me. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's say that together. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so we celebrate Easter this morning. The tomb is empty and God has raised Jesus from the dead and promises the same to us and to all of creation. And so we give thanks. To help you... Uh, Take part in the worship service this morning. Um, I, I put a link uh, to the bulletin that you can download if you'd like. Um, it's up near the title of the video in the, in the title description of the video where you can uh, download that. So we continue with the confession, confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. So the good news is that as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to all of you the entire forgiveness of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in singing the hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. And uh, as I get this ready, I, I want to say another word of thanks to Madison Wombeck and her family uh, for everything they've been doing for us, uh, helping us out with music. Um, it, is, it is very much appreciated. So let's sing.
Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have a couple of readings for you. Uh, first from Acts, read by Anna, and then from Colossians, read by Erica. Acts 10, 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. A reading from Colossians chapter three, one through four. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, 
seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The Word of the Lord. And our Easter Gospel comes from the 28th chapter of Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to all of you and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know about you, but lately I've had a hard time seeing things. It's been a foggy three weeks or so. I'm not even sure how long it's been. I've just lost track of time. It's not so much been in the physical or literal sense that I've had a hard time seeing things for, I mean, I can see my family members. I saw the giant full moon the other night. I can see the mountains, all of that. My physical eyes are just fine. What I'm talking about though, has more to do with the eyes of my imagination or the eyes of my soul. Things are foggy. I've been hunkering down and cooped up to do my part in our global battle with this coronavirus and to be a, a responsible Montanan sheltering in place. The walls of our house are becoming my world. Looking for the latest news on the pa pandemic, my eyes spend too much time staring at the two-dimensional pixels of my phone or computer or TV. I try to concentrate, but the fog drifts in so that what seems the most real is threat, disaster, worry, and death. I wonder if you're experiencing something similar. This is a time that we're not used to our, our parents or our grandparents or great-grandparents lived through the influenza outbreak around 1918. Maybe they told some of us stories about it. They went through a similar time of quarantine and there were many, many more deaths, but they didn't have the up-close awareness of it uh, through the news that we have now. I mean, it's really important for us to be informed and aware. Um, it helps us to be vigilant. It helps us to do the responsible right thing. And it helps us to be connected to friends and to society at large. But as mortal creatures, after a while, we grow weary. We're not used to this. I'm not sure our brains can handle it. 
So our outlook gets clouded. It becomes foggy. Do we even notice the beautifulness of spring slowly emerging right before us? Do we notice the blessings that we have, the blessings of shelter, of work, of family, of health? In the, the story that the Gospel of Matthew tells us about Easter, about the women being the first ones to find Jesus' tomb empty. Seeing is a big time theme. There are six action words in the story about seeing or looking or appearance. The women go to see the tomb. The appearance of the angel is described, how it looks. The angel notes that the women are looking for Jesus. The angel invites the women into the tomb to see where Jesus' body was laying. And then the angel says that they will see Jesus in Galilee. Then they finally do see Jesus. He appears. And as he gives the women um, the mission to tell the rest of the disciples about his resurrection, he notes that they will see him in Galilee. Seeing is believing. Or maybe better yet, believing is seeing. Or maybe even best yet, Jesus gives us sight. Jesus gives us sight in cloudy times, foggy times. I'm not here to tell you to shield yourself, shield yourself from the misery that is going on in the world around us right now. Not at all. I, I think Jesus calls us to look to where there is suffering and to see it and to pay attention to it, to pray for those who suffer and to do all we can to help them. Uh, that is what he would do, that's what he's doing now, and that, that's what he calls us to do. What I'm saying is Jesus transforms our experience. His resurrection transforms our experience. Jesus' resurrection means that suffering and death do not have the last say. Jesus' resurrection means that we will arise. Jesus' resurrection means that the creation will be renewed. God promises it. So dear friends, may the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus uh, not only grant you faith to, to uh, have faith that you'll rise from the dead someday after you pass away, but may Jesus' resurrection, may the power of the Holy Spirit transform your sight in the present, transform your seeing in the present, transform your imagination and your soul today so that what you see and experience, so that what you take in is the experience of God's creation being made new, so that what you take in, so that what you see of yourselves is a reborn child of God who is given all the power necessary uh, to be of help and of love. The angel gives the women a, the mission to, uh, to go and tell, or Jesus gives the women the mission to go and tell the disciples that he is risen. Jesus' resurrection means that each of us has a purpose, a mission. Each of us has a call to do something, to do something with our faith, to do something with this splendid Easter story that we so love celebrating. Jesus' resurrection gives us a mission to get up from our Easter brunches when they're done, to get up from our Easter dinners when they're concluded, and to reach out in love to God's world with the message of new life on our lips and the message of courage and new life um, in all that we do. So dear friends, happy Easter to you. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in our Lord Jesus Christ.
Amen. We sing, thine is the glory. Let's join together in confessing our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. 
God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, during this time of pandemic, may your Holy Spirit give countries and leaders of countries the willpower and the imagination to be able to cooperate and work for the good of your whole creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep, and we mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We are especially mindful of those who are suffering uh, from the coronavirus and the illness that it causes. We are mindful of those who um, are stricken with worry because of it those uh, whose work uh, causes them great exhaustion and risk. Lord, we pray for their strength and for their healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day. We pray that you would bless musicians. We pray that you would bless those who offer greetings, and are eager to share God's peace with one another. Uh, bless us all uh, as we worship in our homes and seek to renew our faith by the power of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died Lord, inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. At this time, uh, I invite you to share God's peace with one another, and as we do so, I want to share a few videos of uh, people from our congregation who sent in God's peace videos to, to me. I want to share those with you here, so please share God's peace with each other. Share God's peace with your family over the phone uh, later on today. Here you go. God's peace to you, the church family, and happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. <laughs> God's, God's peace, peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Hi. Peace be with you. God's peace, Henry. God's peace. God's peace. Happy. Peace be with you. Say love. God's peace. peace. Be you. Happy, Happy Easter. Peace be with you. Um, at this time uh, in, in the service, normally this would be when we uh, take our offering, right? In the service, we pass around the offering plates and we listen to good music during this time. Um, we're not able to do that right now, but I wanna remind you that uh, 
you can still give to the church and the church, uh, the church's ministry uh, is still very much dependent on the, the care that y'all show uh, for one another through your offering. So you can give by sending uh, your offering to the church through the mail. You can give by going to our website and making a one-time donation there using your debit or credit card. Or also on our website, there's information about how you could sign up uh, to give electronically um, on a like on an automatic basis, like you would your power bill or something like that. Um, and so in addition to that, um, I have a, a word of thanks for you from uh, one of our families for your offering, for your support. Um, it's, you've been very generous during this time too. So I wanna thank you for that. And then after that video, um, there's gonna be a, a couple of pictures of people's altars uh, that they've set up in their homes for communion as we're celebrating communion this day and as we prepare to do that uh, shortly here. So I wanted to, to show those to you as well. Thanks to everybody for your financial support of the church during these trying times. Let's join together in the offering prayer. Let us pray together. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave thank. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying to them, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. At this time, I invite you to either give yourself communion, uh, like I'm going to do for myself, or uh, give one another communion if you're with one other 
person or your family gathered together, take turns giving each other communion. As you give um, each other the bread or as, as you give yourself the bread, say the body of Christ given for you. As you give each other the wine or the grape juice, say the blood of Christ shed for you. And as we do this, uh, we have a hymn. You can listen, you can sing along. Uh, I am the bread of life is, is what it's called. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with everyone who is in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> 
<clears throat> it's, it's a real joy worshiping with all of you in this unique way. Uh, hopefully this won't last a whole lot longer, but who knows? Um, I'm able to see that we have people worshiping with us, not only in the Columbia Falls Flathead area, but also um, people in Oregon, Washington. Uh, we have some Iowans and Minnesotans with us and uh, probably some from other places as well. So thank you all for uh, tuning in for our, our service today. Again, it's a joy celebrating the the, the way that God raises from the dead. It's a joy celebrating that with you. Um, absolutely wonderful. So as we conclude our service or before the benediction, I want to offer some videos and pictures for all of you of uh, people from our church community, from Our Savior's Lutheran Church. Uh, many people have been busy this week um, sending in videos or pictures of Easter greetings or um, enjoying coffee hour videos. Uh, there's one of, of some people uh, showing what they're gonna be, um, how they're gonna be enjoying their Easter dinner. And then there's a bunch of people who put together some Easter bonnet pictures. So uh, let's take a minute and enjoy these. Thanks to everybody who sent these in too. Happy Cheers. Easter. Happy Easter. Water. Easter. I gave up chocolate donuts for Lent, so now I get to start eating one a day again. Happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He has risen. He, he has, has risen, risen indeed. indeed. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter. Miss you guys. Miss you. Oh boy. Happy Easter, church family. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from the Schwagel family. family. The Schwagels, yeah. Happy Easter. God bless everybody. Well, good morning, everyone. We are sure missing you. The scones don't taste the same. The coffee isn't hot enough, but we are surviving. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Miss everyone. Mmm, these scones are good, <laughs> but they don't taste the same. No. We are missing our peeps. Yes, we are. Peace be with you. God bless. It's really a joy to see um, how you all rely on each other for uh, having your faith and your love inspired. Um, and again, I look forward to the day when we can come back together again in the physical presence of each other uh, to be the body of Christ with each other and uh, to celebrate God's goodness for us as a congregation. Um, in the meantime, certainly we are still the body of Christ um, dispersed out to our 
places to do God's work. So receive the Easter blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. May Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. So go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Happy Easter.